the Spirit of God is with you and also with you. Welcome to this virtual gathering of Washington Avenue Christian Church. My name is Nathan Russell, and my pronouns are he and him, and I serve this congregation as its senior pastor. Thank you for inviting and welcoming us into your various viewing locations for the alternative, an online gathering to reconnect with God and with one another. You are welcome and wanted here and wherever you may be, just however you are. This gathering is an alternative to the myriad things that grab our attention and time and an opportunity to reconnect, rejoin, and remember. Together we will sing, hear, pray, share, and commune. Our Director of Worship and the Arts, Evan Collins, will lead us in the hymns and the lyrics will appear on your screen. We hope you will do whatever helps you create meaning and connect with the divine. May you sense God's presence in new ways, alternative ways, ways that are life-giving, loving, and liberating. We are in the season of Lent, a time for giving up old things and taking on new things. Our, our curtains are purple, and the artwork behind me can describe a Lenten journey if we look closely and let it speak to us as if for the first time. The candles are already glowing by God's divine spark. And now we ring this chime. To clear the air, because our worship of God is about to begin. As we prepare to lift our hearts, will you join me in a query a query is an ancient practice of asking a question. You can engage this question by yourself with a viewing partner in the live chat that's off to the side or with me on Twitter using our church's handle at W-A-C-C-E-L-Y-R-I-A. The question is this, what does Jesus taste like?
lamp of learning, bless the light that reason lends. Teach us judgment as we kindle, sparks of thought your spirit sends. Sanctify our search for knowledge and the truth that sets us free. Come, illumine mind and spirit, joined in deepest unity. Vine of truth, in you we flourish, by your grace we learn and Christ among us, shape our life, our search to know. Joined in Christ, in living, dying, may we help the church convey. Witness to thy saving gospel, bearing fruit of faith today. reading from the gospel according to Matthew, chapter 7, verses 15 through 20. Listen for the word of God stirring within and beyond these words of Scripture. Beware of false prophets who will come to you all in sheep's clothing, but inside are rapacious wolves. By their fruits you will know them. Are grapes gathered from thorns or thistles figs? Thus, every good tree bears beautiful fruit, but the rotten tree bears wicked fruit. A good tree cannot bear wicked fruit, nor can a corrupt tree bear beautiful fruit. Every tree that does not bear beautiful fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, you will know them by their fruits. For the promise and covenant of the very best, most beautiful gospel good news, we say together, thanks be to God. In the front yard of our church is a ginkgo tree, now, it's not just any ordinary ginkgo tree, for it is centuries, year, centuries old on the National Registry of Trees, and it has parented many other ginkgo trees throughout the United States. This tree is so historic that it has developed a lore, a myth of origin of how it was planted at 301 Washington Avenue. Once upon a time, the tree was the largest of ginkgo trees, but it has been cut back over the years for its health and the safety of people who walk on the church grounds. Every spring, the tree explodes with leaves of green, and every fall, its leaves turn a burning yellow you better take the pictures of the turning leaves when you think about it because the foliage will be adhered to the tree one day and fall to the ground the next. What you may not know about our ginkgo tree is that it has a gender and it bears fruit, lots and lots of fruit. About the time the ginkgo tree dropped its fruit in fall 2021 was when I adopted Thunder, the German shepherd who comes to me with work every day. 
Not too long after Thunder was part of my normal church routine, someone asked me, are you picking up after your dog? Now, let's be, let's be honest. One way to know a person is if they walk their dog with that blue bag in hand. I do pick, after, pick up after Thunder has made her deposits, but this person confessed to sensing an odor that smelled like, sh- well, you know. To be honest, I had checked the soles of my shoes several times because I had also caught a whiff of that foulest smell, and then it hit. I had squashed the fruit of the ginkgo tree. If you've done that before, then you know to watch your step. The smell is the worst. Thunder can do bad all by herself, but she is not that bad. So I explained to the member who questioned my dog care that it's the ginkgo tree, I swear. I'm not sure if I was convincing or not because it's so easy to shift the blame to another, even to a tree. On a couple of occasions, Thunder herself has decided to do a taste test of said fruit. Despite my protest and shouts of, no, she's bitten into it anyway. However, it does not take her long to learn that the ginkgo fruit is not something she wants to eat. It is rotten. It is wicked. It is vile. In Matthew 7, Jesus is preaching the Sermon on the Mount. It's his longest sermon ever, starting all the way back in Matthew chapter 5 with the Beatitudes, and he's just about to wrap it up. One of his final points is to give a warning, a caution about false prophets, people who will come in wearing sheep's clothing, but inside are rapacious wolves. These are pretty good actors. They look like sheep, they smell like sheep, and bat like sheep. Chances are they are indeed sheep, but it's really a big bad wolf masquerading as a lamb. We've seen such wolves throughout Scripture. The serpent in the garden doesn't so much disguise himself, but he knows Scripture well enough to quote it. He is a wolf. The adversary that tempts Jesus in the desert does so with all the right things, things that Jesus would want, that anybody would want, but they are not true things. That adversary is a wolf too. Herod, the so-called puppet king of the Jews, who was on the imperial payroll of Rome, he was a wolf in sheep's clothing if there ever was one. Wolves are cunning, rapacious, and greedy predators who have appetites for sheep. Wolves know how to say things that sheep like to hear. Wolves can quote Scripture, too. But there is a world of difference between quoting Scripture and using Scripture to promote the future God wants and ultimately will have. In recent days, we've seen wolves disguise themselves as sheep. When Pat Robertson goes on so-called Christian TV programming and strings together a series of ancient Scriptures to say that God compelled Vladimir Putin to invade Ukraine, we are looking at a wolf in sheep's clothing. When the Russian patriarch Kirill, the leader of the Russian Orthodox Church, in his official ecclesial position, gives a full-throated endorsement of Putin's crusade in Ukraine, we're looking at another wolf in sheep's clothing. In any time and in any place in which religious leaders become agents of empire and sycophants with political partisanship, 
All the while, lifting the cross, quoting scripture, and pointing to a flag of red, white, and blue, we're looking at wolves in sheep's clothing. As soon as Jesus introduces us to these wolves in costume, he switches metaphors. No longer are we talking about carnivorous predators, but trees and fruit. By their fruits, y'all will know them, Jesus says, which I think is an invitation for us to have a taste test. When we hear people proclaim the things of God, we should listen. We should take a bite. We should do a taste test. What spices ignite the taste buds at the tips of our tongues? Do the flavors reveal the Jesus life or something else? Do we spit out the fruit or keep chewing for a few seconds? If the taste is clearly awful, if it's like the fruit of the ginkgo tree out front, we may be tempted to go to the shed, sharpen the axe, and cut down said tree. But that is not ours to do. There is a world of difference in judging the flavors of the fruit that we have sampled, which Jesus wants us to do, and taking judgment into our own hands and cutting down the tree. This text isn't really about us. In other words, Jesus doesn't tell us, his disciples, to bear good fruit, at least not here. He's more concerned with us being able to taste and see and discern what is of God and what is not. And yet, we know of other biblical texts in which we are called to bear much fruit. In the Gospel of John, Jesus exhorts us to bear fruits worthy of repentance. Later in the same Gospel, Jesus tells us that He is the vine, we are the branches, and our job is to bear fruit. Paul reminds us that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's nine distinct flavors all in one fruit. So what do you think people experience when they get a taste of us? What flavors do our lives reveal? Is our fruit bitter or sweet, wicked and rotten, beautiful and tasteful? What about when people get a taste of our church? We should remember as individuals and as a church that wolves always think that their, their stuff doesn't stink. Ultimately, this text is about Jesus. How do you think Jesus tastes? Let's be honest. Sometimes Jesus is pretty pungent, ripe, but that doesn't mean the fruit is bad. Jesus can come on a bit strong. Well, I do th believe that Jesus is for everybody, I do think Jesus, he is an acquired taste. Our palates will have to adjust, no doubt, to him. But once they do, I think we will find that Jesus tastes like amazing grace. Jesus tastes like the love of God. He tastes like the best bread you've ever eaten and the finest wine you've ever sipped. So, what do you say, church? Shall we do a taste test every time we gather for worship and we are at table with one another? 
As we taste Jesus, the one who is the Word made flesh, I think we will discover the beautiful flavors of the Jesus life, the tang and risk of new adventure, a taste with zest beyond belief, the spice of the very best, most beautiful gospel good news. Amen. Christ Jesus says, when you lay the foundation, are you resolved through all seemed lost to risk your reputation, yourself, your wealth for Christ the Lord, as you now give your solemn death be buried now through baptism's joyous union no selfish claim should you allow if you desire communion when Christ redeemed together meet the bread of fellowship to Within the church is warm embrace. The child of God is molded. God's spirit lights the infant face, and in God's grace is folded. When childlike steps Christ's plan we trace till we grow up in. Godly grace. In Christian growth we are matured, a fruitful vines a token. This good growth may be assured, oft times to us is broken. The bread of fellowship replete. Christ redeemed together meet. On the left hand side of your screen is a QR code. You can scan this code with a smartphone or a smart device. With the website that opens from the QR code, you can do three different things. First, register your attendance. Second, submit a prayer request. Third, give online. The QR code is a new experiment for us, and when you use it to register your attendance, you can tell us how you are creating meaning and deepening your faith, which we are always so very glad to hear. If you're not sure about the QR code, don't worry. There are links in the below video description that do the same thing. Now we turn to our prayer of the people, which is an alternative to the ways in which we normally pray. This prayer is not passive, but active. This is a body prayer, one that will engage our full selves, and I invite you to participate in ways that are helpful and create meaning for you. For our first move, will you imagine you have a piece of fruit in your hand and hold it up as if to inspect it. And let us pray. God of all creation, we are inundated with constant messages about faith, religion, and you. Some of the things we hear are direct quotations of Scripture, and yet they do not ring true. Sometimes our ears feel as if they're being tickled, and we don't necessarily mind that, but we wonder, too, if we're just being told what we want to hear. Wolves disguising themselves as sheep is nothing new. 
False prophets have been around twisting good and holy words into something for personal gain or even to sow fear and doubt. So we need your wisdom to discern what is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, or praiseworthy in the fruit that we are consuming. For our second move, will you pretend to take a bite of that fruit and just hold right there? Oh God, we have opened wide and sunk our teeth into this fruit, and we're not exactly sure what we're tasting just yet. It's an explosion of flavor, and that's not bad, but it is a bit much all at once. We want to know the flavors of your very best, most beautiful gospel good news so that we, in turn, may bear good fruit too. So all may see that we are your sheep, your followers, and not praying wolves. Guide us always by your Spirit toward the future you want and ultimately will have, and nourish us with bread and wine for the journey. For our final move, will you bring your hands toward your heart in a posture of devotion, and let us continue our prayer, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Finally, we come to this sacred meal. Here, we are invited to taste the flavors of God's good news of justice and joy, peace and shalom. This meal, this this table, this food, this bread and wine, they are for you, for me, and the whole wide world. On the night Jesus met with his disciples in an upper room, He first washed his hands, and then taking the bread, he blessed it and broke it and said, this is my body given for you. Take, eat, all of you, and do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup And after giving thanks for it, said, This is the cup of the new covenant poured out in my blood. Drink of it, all of you, and do this in remembrance of me. For as long as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we taste the beautiful fruit that is Jesus Christ. Come, beloved, you are welcome and wanted here, and everything is ready.
go into the world, beloved, and make a plain declaration and a public demonstration of the very best, most beautiful gospel good news of Jesus Christ. Embody this gospel that is alternative to the ways of the world because the world is too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. Remember that you are never, ever very far from God's heart. And finally, finally, trust with everything you've got and all that you are that the future God wants and ultimately will have. It's here. It's now even as it is still on its way. Amen.